So I welcome everybody to the Museum 6 Biodiversity Seminar uh, for this year, 2021. And we hold this seminar series as a way to promote uh, biodiversity conservation education. Our speaker today is Michael P. Gatpatan. Mike is a registered microbiologist by the Philippine Society of Microbiology. He finished his uh, master's degree in microbiology at the University of the Philippines, Los Baños. And uh, his research endeavors are in the field of microbial ecology and molecular microbiology, particularly in using uh, NGS or next generation sequencing technology to unveil uh, microbial interactions. He is a recipient of the International Society for Microbial Ecology 2019 Young Researchers, Young Researchers Grant given by the Philippine Society of Microbiology. So everyone, let us all give a big warm welcome to Michael Gatpatan. Mike? Uh, yes, hello. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank morning, you for, uh, for that uh, generous introduction. So uh, wait, I will share my screen. So by the way, I would also like to uh, thank Dr. Marian uh, De Leon for inviting me. Uh, to have a talk for this uh, biodiversity uh, seminar of MNH. Uh, Doc Marian, uh, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, is my screen uh, visible uh, at your end, sir? Sir Floor? Yes, it's visible. Thank you. Uh, it's awesome. So um, before I start my uh, my presentation, I would like to give a brief uh, background on the uh, project in which this study is associated. Uh, actually, this is part of the Canopy project, which is a DOST-funded project. So uh, the project aimed to have a baseline information or, stu or study on the Canopy ecosystem at Mount Makiling Forest Reserve. So it has a, a participation of different uh, and various uh, research institutions in the Philippines and some uh, scientists and researcher. So um, the members of the uh, the projects are from uh, College of Forestry by uh, Dr. Bantayan and uh, Dr. Castillo. So uh, they uh, study the uh, tree ecosystem uh, in the uh, Makiling Forest Reserve. Uh, also participation, par participation uh, with Dr. Say Sarate of uh, UPLB Biotech. So uh, she's in charge in the uh, microbial uh, diversity in the uh, in the ecosystem or the uh, canopy uh, fauna, uh, sorry, flora. And also participation uh, of UPLB uh, Microbiology Division by Dr. Uh, Sil Villegas and Dr. Uh, Noel Sabino. So uh, I am part of this team. So we uh, conducted a study on the diversity of uh, microorganisms, uh, both fungi and bacteria from uh, canopy invertebrates. So uh, for this presentation, I will, uh, I will focus the discussion on the bacterial diversity on ants. So also uh, participation uh, by Dr. Uh, Simbahan of UP Diliman and also Sir JC Gonzalez for the uh, diversity of canopy uh, vertebrates. So allow me to present to you uh, some background uh, information on the study. Uh, the study actually, uh, or the project actually focused uh, on the canopy ecosystem, but due to some limitation, uh, we were able to uh, to collect some uh, samples, uh, not entirely from the canopy. So we, we were able to sample uh, from understory ec uh, ecosystem or a strat stratum of the, uh, the forest uh, ecosystem. So uh, by definition, uh, forest canopy is an aggregate of all crown that stand of vegetation. And uh, due to limited access or the challenging uh, par or challenging uh, uh, limitation on uh, sampling, uh, it was only in the 19th century where the canopy uh, study uh, really uh, started. So the early um, methods that uh, were utilized uh, back then is through uh, fogging. So uh, although uh, it is a widely used uh, method at that time. It has also uh, some limitation because uh, it uh, basically it disturbed the uh, the ecosystem and also uh, there are chemical lockdown that uh, could happen. So yes, and uh, also a uh, construction of equipment and uh, climbing methods are also uh, uh, 
uh, famous method uh, before. But uh, for now, uh, there are advancement in the um, methodology on the first uh, or, or in the canopy uh, studies. So we have now uh, we are now using drones and cameras to survey the uh, canopy ecosystem. And with that, I think uh, it also in uh, increase the uh, interest of uh, scientists and research researchers to study the canopy ecosystem. Well, canopy ecosystem is a dyna dynamic boundary of, of biosphere and also a hot spot of uh, biological diversity. So, uh, directly, you no, know, they are uh, the canopy ecosystem uh, directly received the sunlight and also a shield or uh, directly received the uh, rainwater. Uh, that's why it has a uh, it is a good uh, like ecosystem or a niche uh, for microorganism. So it, it is also a habitat zone of a different uh, flora and fauna as well as microorganism. And it creates new uh, niche uh, in the form of new food sources for uh, different animals uh, in, the, in the forest. Uh, the focus of the study is Hymenoptera for me today. So uh, it is distinguished from wasp uh, as having a constriction in the rear uh, portion of the waist. And also they are us social insect, uh, meaning to say they form uh, a colony. And uh, basically there is a uh, one female and uh, uh, several uh, reproductive males that uh, is responsible for reproduction. And other uh, non-reproductive uh, population are responsible for uh, rearing of the youngs and protection of the, of the colony. Uh, well, ant is a dominant, is a dominant uh, invertebrates in the forest ecosystem. In fact, uh, they uh, constitute around 20 to 60 percent of the uh, arthropod uh, forest uh, biomass. And they are they play important uh, ecological uh, function, you know, such as decomposition, and also uh, they aid uh, pollination and uh, seed dispersal. Uh, for bacteria, uh, they are ubiquitous, of course, and uh, we could uh, always found uh, a bacteria, a microorganism in any part of ecosystem. Uh, they are uh, Layers of important um, ecological uh, cycle. No? So they are part of, uh, as I said, the composition, nutrient cyc cycling, and, and other uh, 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 cycle of, uh, like, of uh, nutrition, uh, nutritional cycle and biogeochemical uh, cycle. And also, uh, bacteria are rarely uh, found in an ecosystem alone. So uh, they usually have a partner with other bacteria or, uh, or association with uh, other uh, microorganisms. So in terms of bacterial diversity, uh, it is the field of microbial ecology that actually focuses on the, uh, on the organization of, of, of living organism or, uh, or in this case, a microorganism in the ecosystem. So uh, they study the uh, the interactions and uh, the functions of each uh, uh, microorganism in the, uh, the ecosystem. And also diversity is an important concept of microbial ecology. And uh, it is mainly a uh, use as a descriptor of community no? and uh, determine uh, or determinant of uh, functional communities. Well, the sampling site here is Mount Makiling Forest Reserve. So uh, this is the focus no, of, the, uh, of the sample collection for this uh, canopy project. So Mount Makiling Forest Reserve is a biodiversity hotspot and it was listed in a 170 uh, priority areas no, in the Philippines for conservation. So aside from flora and fauna, I think uh, that there, there is a limited uh, study uh, in the uh, microbial or uh, microbial ecology in the Mount Makiling uh, Forest Reserve. So just to give you an example, uh, in 2011, the team of Dr. Lantikan was uh, able to, uh, to have uh, or to, to conduct a study on the uh, uh, micro microbial uh, ecology or microbial ecosystem in the uh, in the in the mud spring so and from the uh from the fauna and flora and also from the uh, uh from the ecosystem itself uh, i think there's no much uh, study that is available uh yeah in mount makiling so uh this is this is the sample uh sampling um 
map that uh, we have uh, used. Uh, this is uh, this is the uh, map of two hectare uh, Malawian Dampalit uh, long-term ecological plan. So uh, this map is uh, uh, is derived from uh, from the study of Dr. Castillo. Uh, which is also part of the Canopy Project and uh, Dr. J.C. Gonzalez. So in here, uh, we were able to uh, sam sample uh, three, uh, three species of, uh, I mean, uh, three uh, trees uh, with, which belong to uh, two uh, species. So namely, Bagtika and, and Nara. So uh, what is the, or what are the criteria that we have used uh, to identify uh, this uh, sampling site? So uh, we use the uh, tree diameter because, uh, it uh, the tree diameter could tell you the age of the tree. So uh, we selected a uh, mature tree for this uh, study because uh, mature tree also have the uh, uh, the established uh, uh, ecosystem in it, right? So uh, that's why we uh, selected uh, this uh, sampling site. So we have collected uh, five some uh, five samples. So we named it as a C because uh, it stands for a colony. So uh, later on, I will discuss to you uh, how we uh, get the sample from the sampling sites. So uh, for this, uh, yeah, for the sampling tree, uh, the C1 and C2, also C3, came from Bagtikan. And uh, C1 came from Canopy Ecosystem. And the others are from Understory. As I mentioned earlier, uh, because, to, because of the limitations uh, in the sampling or the logistical uh, 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 logist logistical limitations. Uh, we, we we only we are only able to uh, collect uh, samples in a certain uh, height of the tree, and uh, yeah, and some of the sampling site we cannot uh, really have the uh, the equipment, no, and uh, yeah, and technologies to access the uh, the the total or the canopy of the uh, trees. Uh, for the methodology, actually, uh, we used uh, two approaches, the culture dependent and culture independent. But for this uh, presentation, uh, the result will be more on the culture independent. So uh, yeah, so I will describe uh, first the culture dependent uh, method. So uh, we were able to isolate uh, and pur purify uh, bacterial and fungal isolates uh, from the uh, from the sample, so we use here the triptychy soy agar. So this is same uh, media culture medium that were used in the study of tops and bextin. So in in two thousand nine. So in case uh, you are interested in uh, in using the TSA for the isolation of uh, of bacteria uh, in in insect, uh, you could uh, refer to those uh, to this reference. After isolation, we were able to fingerprint uh, the isolate. So uh, we did fingerprinting to streamline the uh, bacterial isolate uh, for identification. So uh, in the fingerprinting, uh, we use the repetitive element sequence uh, using the GTG5 primer. So only the uh, unique bands were considered uh, for identification. So for identification, we utilize the uh, 16S amplicon sequencing uh, using the Sanger or capillary sequencing technology. So uh, yeah. Then we group uh, the isolates and we perform uh, community level physiological profiling using the ecolog, uh, ecolog assay. So in the uh, community level physiological profiling tested the metabolic profile of the isolates uh, using different uh, carbon sources. So the carbon sources that we have used are uh, carbohydrates, uh, polymer, uh, carboxylic and ketonic acids, amino acids, amines and amides. Then for the culture independent method, uh, we used here the whole ant as a test or as a sample. So we extracted the, the DNA from the uh, whole ants. Then we subject it to uh, library preparation and sequencing using the Luminomysic platform. So we targeted the V3 and V4 regions of the 16S RNA. And the primers that uh, we utilized is from the uh, publication of Klein Vort et al. 2013. So if in case you're interested with the primer set that we have used, uh, you could refer to the reference that I've mentioned. Uh, the sequencing uh, was done in the Philippine Genome Center you know, with the help of, uh, of some people in the PGC. So uh, they, 
they optimized the method and also they uh, they ran the sequencing uh, for us. Then for the sequence analysis, we use the motor uh, version one thirty nine point five. So you could refer that if if uh, if you want to uh, to do the same uh, same kind of or of 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 study. So in Mothor, we combine the uh, the pair end reads from the Illumina MySeq, and we also remove the ambiguous sequences uh, from the from the raw sequences, and also align it to the reference uh, database. So uh, in here, we use the Silva Silva uh, database for the alignment. Also, the OTU clustering uh, was also uh, did in Mothor. We also did the alpha and uh, beta diversity analysis. So basically, we used uh, indices, uh, including Shannon, Sim Simpson, Pylos, and um, we also were, we are, we were also able to, to transform the index to the uh, to effective uh, genus number through the Shannon uh, effective genus number uh, formula. And also, we, uh, we did the uh, beta beta diversity analysis uh, using the Bay Curtis distance and UPGMA uh, cluster analysis. So uh, this is to look into the uh, the, the beta analysis, uh, beta diversity between the, between the samples. And lastly, uh, we want to look into uh, to some information, although predictive uh, information on the uh, genetic or the uh, on the gene profile and on the gene profile of the uh, of the communities uh, from the samples. So in here, we utilize the tax for fun. It is a free uh, software uh, used for a uh, prediction of gene profile of your uh, of your uh, 16S amplicon. Yeah, we use a uh, 16S amplicon here and at around 100 uh, base pair uh, reads. And for the sequence alignment, we have used uh, the Silva NGS database. So uh, yeah, in that database, uh, we align the sequence and also uh, for the copy number, uh, we utilize the NCBI uh, to look for the uh, copy number of identified uh, uh, OTU from the, uh, yeah, from the, from the tax for fine uh, profile. Uh, so then we did uh, identification of samples. So, uh, yeah, uh, for sample identification, it was uh, done at MNH through the help of Dr. David General uh, from UPLB NIH. Uh, Doc, thank you for, for, for the help in identifying the, the samples that we have collected. So in here, uh, we have collected uh, five samples. And uh, for the uh, first sample, uh, it was identified as Dolico Dolicoderus thoracicus. So uh, the thoracicus, nest on ground and rotten logs. And they also uh, found in the three hollows and in, in canopy. So uh, in terms of association, uh, the thoracicus is associated with, uh, with different uh, arthropods in the ecosystem. So to name, to name one, uh, they are associated with uh, wasps. And uh, later on, I would also uh, uh, discuss to you the result of the study, which also, uh, uh, show uh, how this ant species interacts with other uh, other uh, arthropods in the uh, in the ecosystem. The second one was identified as Myrmicaria, although uh, as mentioned during the identification of Dr. Dave General, uh, uh, the, the sample that we have collected might be a possible new species of uh, Myrmicaria. Well, uh, Myrmicaria. Uh, if we look into the uh, morphological characterization, it has a dental count of four to five. Uh, it has uh, seven segments uh, in, in its antenna and they produce a sting. So in terms of ecology, uh, they thrive in different uh, ecological uh, niche. So they forage uh, on foliage and they nest on trees and some are also known predator. For the uh, sample uh, tree or colony tree, it was identified as uh, Colobopsis leonardi. And for a uh, sample of uh, colony three and uh, five, uh, they are both uh, polyrachis species, uh, which is which are 
uh, endemic in the Philippines. So C4 is identified as Polyrachis mindanaensis and C5 uh, was identified as Polyrachis uh, semi-enormis. Uh, by the way, uh, C, C3, uh, Colobopsis leonardi, uh, Polyrachis mindanaensis and Polyrachis semi-enormis semi-enormis, belong to a same uh, ant tribe, uh, namely uh, Camponotini tribe. So later on, uh, I would uh, discuss why this is important, uh, the, the relationship of these uh, three ants species. So in terms of bacterial composition, uh, we measured here the uh, species richness and species evenness. No? So uh, for species richness, we use the uh, Shannon index and we also uh, use a Simpson index. So uh, for this, we compare the, uh, the bacterial or the species richness in each uh, samples. And uh, based on the uh, result, uh, the bacterial richness uh, the C2 or Myrmicaria species uh, has the uh, highest uh, bacterial uh, species richness if we compare it to, uh, to, to four other uh, ant species used in this uh, study. So C3 and C4 and C5 uh, showed, uh, showed low number or uh, low species richness no? as we documented uh, in the effective genus number only uh, one to two species. No, could uh, genus I mean uh, is uh, is documented in terms of uh, evenness. Uh, nearly all the sample has low evenness. So uh, why it is? Uh, I mean, what is the reason why? Uh, why this? Uh, why no? What are what are the reasons? No, why um, uh, for this? Uh, for this index. So basically, uh, what we, we are looking here is that uh, the low species richness and low uh, species evenness in the sample may be due to uh, the, the ant species that we collected have a specific uh, bacterial lineage or specific uh, structures that house a specific bacterial uh, lineage. No, uh, well, it is not new or it is not uh, a new uh, fact uh, when we are looking into the uh, diversity of bacteria in insect. No, there are meron naman talaga na bacterial meron naman talaga structure yung uh, mga insects, also ants na nagahouse ng specific uh, uh, bacterial lineage. And secondly, uh, there might be a negative interaction between the uh, established uh, bacterial community, the insect. So uh, these are the uh, the reasons that we are looking no why uh, we have or why we uh, documented uh, low species uh, richness and evenness in the community. Sorry. For the abundant uh, bacterial uh, taxa, so in class level, we documented that uh, Enterobacterialis is the most dominant uh, class followed by Rhizobialis and other class are Orbalis, Ricachales, Spirochitales, and Clostridialis. And in terms of bacterial order, uh, gamma protea bacteria is the most uh, dominant in terms of uh, the sequence that we have recovered from the, uh, from the community, followed by alpha protea bacteria, and some, are, and some sequences from Clostridia, Bacteroidia, and others. In terms of abundance uh, in family level, uh, yes, Rhizobia CE is the most dominant in uh, Dolicoderus, Torresicus, and Myrmicaria species, the C1 and C2. While uh, C3, C4, C5 shared specific or uh, shared dominant uh, bacterial uh, family, which is the Enterobacteria CE. In terms of uh, genera, uh, C1 is dominated by Sorry. Uh, sorry for interruption. <laughs> I just need to move the. Uh... Right. So, in terms of um, bacterial genera, uh, for C1, 
unclassified members members of Rhizobia psi was documented and also or bacii for myrmecaria species Rhizobia psi is also a uh, dominant as well as candidatus topelaria and um, and other uh, bacterial genera were also documented in uh, c2 for uh, c3 c4 c5 or uh, camp or samples from Camponatini tribe, uh, they shared uh, dominant uh, bacterial genera. So uh, they are, I mean, uh, the dominant bacterial gen genus actually is uh, Candidus blockmania. So uh, they all shared this uh, this specific bacterial genus. And also, uh, we could also found Wolbachia. Uh, in terms of uh, beta analysis, uh, we use here uh, a Bray Curtis and UPGMA cluster analysis to look into uh, the, the beta diversity. No? So as you could see in the uh, in the figure, uh, C3, C4, C5 are uh, clustered together. So meaning to say uh, they have or they shared a lot of uh, bacterial uh, uh, genus. By the way, we use uh, bacterial genus no, for this uh, clustering uh, analysis. While C C2 and C1 uh, showed uh, a unique uh, microbial profiles as compared to C3, C4, and C5. We also use uh, controls here, uh, namely S6, which is uh, a species of bird, uh, Tilinopus occipitalis, and uh, S7, also a bird species, uh, Pinototus eurosticus. So I will discuss now the, uh, the microbial profiles of each uh, unsamples that we have collected. No? Uh, for uh, Dolicoderus or the uh, colony wine, majority of the sequence will belong to Rhizobia CE or Bacii and uh, Burkholderia CE. Uh, it is important to note he here that uh, Rhizobia CE, uh, based from previous study, is associated with uh, herbivory uh, diet of the host. So uh, based on the background check <laughs> that we have did for Adolicoderus, uh, they, they are uh, consumed plant-based diet. So uh, I think it is reasonable why we, uh, we see uh, dominant uh, rhizobacteria CE in the uh, community from, uh, from Adolicoderus. I think the important thing that I uh, need to note here is the abundance of Orba CE. So Orba CE, is uh, dominant and associated with bees and other uh, and other uh, invertebrates. So, yeah. So uh, this is uh, I think interesting fact here that uh, why we uh, we see Orbacii from the uh, community from uh, from Delicoderus. So it may be that uh, that the Delicoderus or the Thoracicus have an uh, like association no, with this. So it is important, it is like interesting thing na bakit may Orba CE dito uh, yeah, in the community from, uh, from the Ricoderus. Also just to add, uh, Rhizobia CE, which uh, were isolated or, or, uh, ident or identified in uh, the Ricoderus uh, based on previous study, uh, uh, the genome or the whole genome analysis of Rhizobia CE, which found in uh, the Licoderus, uh, is not uh, really closely to the uh, to other Rhizobia that we are uh, familiar. So, uh, meaning to say, uh, it is uh, it is a uh, tawag dito. Sorry. Yeah, it is. Um, Yeah. based on the genome study of uh, Rhizobia CE, uh, it, it is close. Uh, it's a distant relative, no, from uh, Rhizobia that uh, we are we know from uh, leg leguminous uh, plant. But also, uh, based on based also on genomic study, the Rhizobia CE found in uh, Delicoderus also possess uh, genes that could uh, help in the nitrogen uh, fixation. The second bacterial taxa is the um, myrmicaria. So uh, the sequence that uh, we have uh, found 
is dominantly from uh, Rhizobia CE, uh, Ruminococcus CE, and Fibrobacterialis. Uh, yeah, and it is important to note here that uh, Candidatus tocopelaya is one of the most uh, dominant uh, dominant bacterial uh, genus that we documented. While uh, Candidatus tocopelaya was also documented in different ant species, including uh, Ponerinae and uh, some Delicoderus species. Also, uh, Spirochetes and Ruminococcus CE uh, are also documented in the uh, microbiome of Myrmicaria, which is uh, uh, known to exist in the termite gut communities. So uh, this is also an interesting uh, uh, thing here that uh, this Myrmicaria could have uh, a, 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 a relationship with, uh, with, with termites. Well, based on some studies uh, done in different countries, in other country, uh, some species of Myrmicaria actually are predator of uh, termites. Also, uh, there are other dominant uh, uh, microbial uh, taxa that we documented. No? Kasama dito yung Ruminococcus CE, which is also uh, found or known to exist in the termite gut. Termite, termite gut. The next is the Camponotini. Uh, uh, ants, namely the Colobopsis and Polyrachis. And as mentioned, uh, uh, these uh, three ant species are uh, related to each other and known to house a specific uh, a bacterial taxa no, or bacterial lineage. So uh, for this study, 90% of the sequence uh, were recovered from Enterobacterialis CE, bacteria CE, uh, Anaplasma CE, ento Entomoplasma CE, and Acetobacteria CE. And among it, Enterobacteria CE, Candidatus blockmania is the predominant. Uh, well, uh, based from uh, previous studies, Candidatus blockmania is known uh, to help the host, the Camponotus or the uh, uh, the carpenter ants to, to upgrade the nutrition in their diet because uh, ants actually uh, feed on uh, low nutrition or low nutritious diet. So uh, as part of sim symbiotic interaction between uh, the ants and symbiotic uh, bacteria, uh, they uh, actually help to help the host to, to, uh, to produce essential uh, amino acid no, that, that will help the, the host. Also, uh, abundance of ent entomopathogenic Wolbachia was also uh, documented uh, yeah, in the microbiome of of, of these three ant species. Uh, in the in previous study, uh, it was shown that Wolbachia could actually uh, uh, negatively interact with other bacteria. So uh, this is also the reason why, why uh, we recovered or uh, we documented uh, low bacterial diversity, specifically with, uh, with these three uh, ant species. So perhaps uh, they might be uh, infected with, with uh, Wolbachia. So here is the predictive uh, functional uh, gene profile that we have uh, uh, did in the sample. So uh, based on this uh, heat map, uh, yeah, the abundant gene profiles uh, are from uh, the, the metabolism of carbohydrates, amino acids, and uh, and some um, nitrogen of, or a uh, profile that is related to uh, nitrogen, nitrogen metabolism. Uh, and also it is important to note here that uh, C3, C4, C5 almost have the same uh, uh, profile and C1 and C2 uh, has also the same uh, profile. Uh, this is because the bacterial taxa or the dominant bacterial taxa uh, in the community uh, was considered in this study. In conclusion, uh, the study that we generated, or the, the data that we generated uh, in the study 
uh, give a significant baseline on the composition and metabolic profile of bacterial communities associated with arboreal ants. And uh, bacterial communities uh, revealed in the study may help to understand the bacterial host interaction, but also the interaction between host and other uh, uh, invertebrates in the canopy ecosystem. So it is a window to uh, that could provide new opportunity for further ex for further exploration in the wide ecology of the canopy ecosystem. So in case you are interested, uh, this study is, uh, is actually posted in the Philippine uh, Journal of Science uh, just this 2021. So uh, you could uh, visit the site and, and read more about this study. And uh, finally, uh, I would like to thank uh, these uh, institutions that help us to, uh, to conduct this study. Uh, the Institute of Biological Sciences, the Graduate School, the OST, uh, the UPLB Forestry, uh, and the Museum of Natural Resources, and also the Philippine Genome Center. Uh, that will be all. Uh, thank you, Paul. Okay. Hello. Well, thank you very much, Mike, for that very interesting uh, uh, presentation uh, with regards to the diversity of uh, bacteria found in the ants that we have been you have been able to collect in Mount Makili. So we will be starting our uh, open forum right now. So we invite uh, the audience to um, put their questions on the chat box if they want it to be just read or if you want to directly talk to Mike and ask questions live, uh, please uh, indicate in the chat box. Uh, for now, let me throw in the first question. Siguro just, ano lang, um, a bit curious because around 2017 or was it in 2018 that there was a big news about this uh, cordyceps fungus that uh, was able to, you know, uh, what we call this, uh, um, attack the ant and uh, control its uh, control its mind. Uh, do you think that uh, there would be bacteria uh, here in Mount Makiling that could also, you know, uh, would be able to do that? Uh, yeah, I actually uh, the, uh, the the diversity of uh, fungi was also uh, conducted through this. Uh, this project. However, uh, because the, the data is not yet done, so uh, we were not able to present this. Uh, so for that, I think uh, the main uh, interest here, I think, is Wolbachia. Because uh, Wolbachia is known for uh, for its entomopathogenic nature. And uh, they are responsible, actually, for uh, male killing of uh, male ants. And uh, they uh, also are uh, responsible for controlling the population of uh, ant. ant uh, and population. Okay. And uh, from the study, we have documented that uh, Colobopsis, uh, Leonardi, uh, Polyrachis semi enormis, and Polyrachis uh, mindanaensis are infected with uh, Wolbachia or potentially uh, infected with Wolbachia. So, does, it, does that mean that some of these bacteria can also become uh, you know, potential biocontrol in the, in, the, in the near future? Yeah, I think Wolbachia is, uh, has. Yeah, I think uh, there is application uh, for mm -hmm. Wolbachia as uh, as a biocontrol agent. I ah. think in other country so, uh, they are utilizing this bacteria. bacteria. So, meron na siyang uh, like uh, commercial product available. Uh, for the commercial product, I'm not sure of, but uh, for uh, like basic study and Wolbachia mm -hmm. as a uh, biocontrol agent, I think uh, there are a lot of uh, publications uh, for that part, sir. Okay. So, there's a question by Willem Joshua Tan. So he asked, will you soon cover, probably in future research, would you, will you soon cover other ant species from other habitats like the forest floor? Because in this, uh, in this uh, study, you were able to concentrate or put your focus on arboreal ants. So probably there would be a difference in, you know, the bacterial diversity based on habitat. So do you have plans in the near future to do that? Yeah, I think that would also be an interesting uh, topic to look into. Uh, 
Well, in in canopy ecosystem, there is also a, a microclimate which could also influence the diversity of bacteria as well as with uh, other uh, environment aside from canopy ecosystem. And it is also important to to look into that uh, the bacterial composition of ants could also reveal uh, the interaction to other hosts. And I think that could also uh, go hand in hand, like the microbial microbial diversity, and to look into the uh, interaction with other uh, invertebrates. I was not able to, probably I missed it, but were you able to, or did you collect uh, like um, um, substrates or other materials that uh, uh, where the ants are, are you know, uh, habitating and do, does this, uh, substrates that microhabitat also have that uh, bacteria that you were collect on physically on the ant? Uh, yeah, for that, I think the team of Dr. Asarate from Biotech mm -hmm. uh, actually have this study of um, bacteria in microflora, in, in uh, flora, like in a uh, canopy uh, uh, leaves. Yeah. So I think uh, with that, we could correlate the result. But however, uh, due to some limitation, no, uh, we could only... Uh, uh, sample a uh, limited uh, limited as uh, limited uh, area in the forest kind of so we were not able to to look into the totality of the uh, of the ecosystem so mas maganda sana if we have uh, that kind of data to look yes. into uh, different uh, areas kung saan merong habit kung saan merong uh, like uh, uh, micro micro habitat yung mm -hmm. ants and uh, other uh, substrate po na pwede natin Interesting kasi kasi parang sa kaya nila na pick up yung yung bacteria di ba right is especially if if um if that bacteria has a uh, good potential for industrial purposes of course gusto nyo rin siyang exploit or gamitin and then uh, the best way is to to look at where it is being produced so as of now you do not have any idea uh where it where it can be you know, where it was produced was it in the ground or was it picked up by the by the ant in some form of plant yeah for that i think uh yeah due to the limitation of study yes, we're okay. not able to to look into that but in terms of um bacterial isolate we were able to isolate some of the uh bacteria but also uh, due to, to li some limitation we mm -hmm. could only isolate uh like certain um uh, certain uh, bacteria that could uh, or th that were able to to grow in the laboratory okay so uh, may i call on wilhelm joshua tan to state uh, to ask directly his questions so that uh, wala kong ma leave out dun sa sa uh, kanya question uh wilhelm can you turn on your mic um hello hello hello, hello can, sir yes we can hear you I'm um, just wondering, long. Um, like there's a Wolbachia. Um, I wonder if it is if the species of Wolbachia in the ants is different from the one found, example, like studied commonly in mosquitoes. And also, I'm wondering if if that could help in controlling pest species of ants, like by ants. And also, I also put another question. Um, we actually, you know, they will start with that question because makamalito na. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. try to answer the first question. Yeah, uh, for the uh, study, for the like in the context of the of our study, we only uh, uh, used the V3 and V4 region of the 16S. Thus, this is not a strong uh, basis now to identify up to a species level. So I think Valbachia in mosquito, the species of Valbachia that could be uh, found in mosquito might be different from ants. Uh, with that, I have uh, like no uh, uh, first... Uh, uh, first-hand information on that. Um, the other Second question. question. So the other question is, um, I don't remember, I remember watching a video before about leaf cutter ants. So leaf cutter ants, what they have is, yeah, I remember they have a bacteria that helps them, helps them to protect them from other microbes. So I'm wondering if these ants also have something like that, where uh, they protect the, where the microbes have some antibiotic, antibiotic properties where to protect the ants from pathogens that mm -hmm. could be harmful to them. Okay, I see. Uh, 
I would like to also point out uh, then with the with the methodology that we have uh, done, uh, because we only did uh, an ap amplicon sequencing. So uh, and that is a limitation because we we only identify uh, the ant up to uh, genus level. But in terms of uh, anti or uh, or other uh, relevant gene. I think we could use uh, like a shotgun metagenomics to look into that, and that is an upgrade of the study. If, if in case in the future, uh, yeah, there, there might be an interested uh, researchers that would like to go into uh, that level or that uh, kind of research. But yeah, uh, in shotgun metagenomics, uh, you could uh, could actually target no uh, uh, specific genes or 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 as fragment of uh, of genes na na pwede i-sequence like uh ng mas mahaba and with that more information then yung makukuha natin okay so uh, thank you for your answer thank you very much uh Joshua um more questions from the from the audience okay mike um do you have already a like a database of you know Bacteria that uh, are they already what you call this barcoded or do you have the sequences uh, or and would this be uh, what you call this uh, a pilot study the first of its kind in the Philippines so uh, would there be collaborators uh, in the future that they could also you know collect ants and try to get the bacterial profile uh, all over the Philippines so that we get try to get a very big, very big picture yes sir actually the the, the, the sequences were already deposited in uh, public databases like NCBI and uh, I think this is a pioneer study in the Philippines especially uh, for arboreal ants uh, and I think as uh, some institution like uh, University of Madison and some uh, institute in Malaysia are also uh, doing some research on arboreal ants mm -hmm. and it is important to note din po that uh, we have collected a potential new species of Pyrmicaria and we were mm -hmm. able to identify the bacterial uh, composition uh, in that uh, specific species uh, specific uh, genus so I think that is uh, I think uh, good information that we could derive from the yeah. study. Um, how about, I don't know, is the bacteria also present in the inside the body of the ants, like in the gut? Uh, yeah. Do they have, do they have like a, like a physiological role inside the, the ants' bodies? Yeah, indeed. Uh, yeah. Uh, they have a physiological role as well as um, metabolic roles. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, ants actually feed on low nutritional levels, uh, low nutritional uh, uh, food. Mm -hmm. So uh, basically, uh, as part of a uh, symbiotic relationship between uh, bacteria and uh, the ant, uh, the bacteria help the uh, host to, prov to produce or to... to uh, to provide uh, essential amino acid, which is uh, which are needed by the host. In terms of uh, iso of uh, of uh, in the context of study, uh, we were not able to uh, to collect a specific uh, microorganism or community from the gut because what we did here is the, the whole ant was uh, utilized in the study. Mm -hmm. So All it's right. it's both from uh, the gut and from the external uh, uh, parts of the ants. Parts. Okay. So from Lyle Gavian Alcomendras, uh, uh, the question is, is the wolf Bacchia species, SP, the only bacteria present in the, ar in the arboreal ants? Um, I know uh, it, is not the it is not only wolf Bacchia. Uh, mm -hmm. If you look back into, uh, into the study that I presented, wolf Bacchia is, present, is uh, dominantly present in carpenter's ant. But there are also other... Uh, uh, Bacterial taxa that is uh, present in the the uh, in the ant species. May I, may I call on Dr. Marian De Leon? She has a question. Hi, Dr. Marian. Uh, hello, Doc. I'm in the car. I'm inside the car because we have a very unstable uh, internet connection. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that very interesting uh, study research. Uh, do you plan to continue this research or you have other researchers who will be continuing your work? Yeah, I think for uh, for this uh, study, uh, we have collected actually not only ants, we're able to collect uh, 
some species of uh, of spiders, of, of termites, of bees uh, mm-hmm. in the canopy ecosystem. But uh, yeah, because of some limitation, we were only to to process the sequences uh, from ants. But the sequence uh, from from the other uh, invertebrates is are also uh, uh, available. So I think uh, uh, I mean some of some of my uh, fellow colleagues before uh, would continue the, the the analysis of the sequences from 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 those samples. Um, another question, Mike. Uh, the the bacterial strains that you were able to isolate and identify were these deposited in culture collections. So other students or researchers in the group who would like to work uh, with the, those uh, strains can access and can use it as reference. Uh, yeah, for culture, uh, for culture dependent method, uh, wait, I'm not sure of the, uh, of the status of the, uh, of the uh, bacterial culture because of uh, Someone actually is in charge uh, yeah, for that. Okay. I, I will get back into you, uh, Doc Marian. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you, Doc Marian. Okay. Thank you, Floor. So, uh, may Mike. I call on uh, Sir Gary Antonio Lirio to throw in his question? Sir Gary, can you turn on your, or your mic, please? Hi, uh, good morning to all of you and to our guest speaker, Mr. Gatpat, uh, Gatpatan. Uh, good, good morning. morning. Good morning. Uh, very in- morning. Yes, very interesting um, presentation. Uh, uh, I'd just like to know because our team in our university, we are really interested on um, looking or prospecting microorganisms which have potential uh, 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 ability to uh, perhaps produce enzymes. And we would like to know if... Uh, are there any g- genera of the species or genera of bacteria in your study that could be culturable in the lab that we could further um, study so we could determine whether they could, could perhaps produce um, enzymes such as cellulase or you know something related to plant degradation? Could you tell us more about it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for that culture... Uh... Microbial culture. Uh, we were able to uh, to, uh, to to cultivate some of it. Like uh, most of it are uh, are are the common ones, uh, like Pseudomonas, uh, Microbacterium, and uh, yes, uh, and among uh, yeah, yeah. But I think uh, because of I know because of uh, like the sample came from environment. It is typically that uh, that. But the environmental condition cannot uh, really uh, really uh, copied in a laboratory, and we only uh, utilize a certain uh, medium. So I think, uh, yeah, I mean, the the more common or the most common uh, bacteria that, that we have isolated are those that are uh, commonly uh, isolated in the laboratory. I see, or, or perhaps those soil associated bacteria that could also be harbored by these ants. So those are also part of those perhaps culturable um, uh, strains or species that you have isolated, correct? Uh, with that, I'm not sure because of uh, like limitation no, on, the, <laughs> on the data that we have. So we, we cannot really uh, say that uh, the isolated uh, bacteria that we gathered from the ant species is associated with, uh, with, with soil, uh, or environment. soil environment, yes. Thank you very much and congratulations. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you, Gary. Uh, we we'll have one comment from Dr. De Leon, Wolf Bakia SP from Mosquitoes. Uh, it's being studied by Dr. Amalin of DSL, DLSU Manila and Ms. Daisy Sukaldito of uh, TUA, maybe it's uh, Trinity University of Asia. So, okay. so yeah, the, it is good to compare the wolf bacchia from those ants and the mosquitoes. So probably they have, you know, some some form of difference. Okay, any more questions from the audience? So habul lang kayo. Okay, going once, going twice. So please ask your questions now. Also from Lyle Gavin Alcomendras again. So ants do have a uh, different hierarchy, right? So they have probably the queen, the workers, and I don't know the others. So uh, her question is, uh, does this bacteria that you have uh, seen, are they also present in the different hierarchy? 
like if you were able to see the queen, was the bacteria also there? Perhaps they might. There might be a difference between the microbial or microbiome of uh, mm. and uh, depending on the hierarchy. But for this study, uh, we have collected here worker ants. So uh, during the sampling activity. Uh, what we did is that uh, we collected ants from foraging trails to make sure that uh, the ant that that the ants that were collected uh, belongs to, to to same colony. Same colony, guys. But perhaps there might be differences uh, in the micro microbiomes. Yeah, parang bakamamia. There are some of the bacteria that ang nagpuproduce actually ay yung new queen ba or merong attachment sa ibang uh, what they call this sa uh, yung hierarchy nung 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 uh, nung ants so for example the, there's a natural affinity for this bacteria to to be attached to the queen uh, uh, compared to the workers okay so uh Lyle Gavin Alcomendras uh, is a research assistant from Cagayan State University so any more questions? Wala. Okay, uh, John Leonard Chan. So from John Leonard, um, hello. How did you prepare your DNA slash C DNA library if your sample is from uh, the insect for NGS? I hope I hope uh, I've read that question right. Okay. Hi, Leonard. Yeah, for that, uh, actually, uh, we were able to use the uh, protocol uh, from uh, from uh, Philippine Genome Center. I think uh, they have established a protocol for a uh, bacterial uh, metagenomic study. And with that, uh, I think we use the Illumina, Illumina MySeq, and the uh, associated kit for library preparation. Yes, what we did is to uh, we we just uh, provide the uh, the genomic uh, ge genomic DNA from the ant samples, then. Uh, then followed followed by uh, by library preparation for Illumina MySeq preparation. That's a uh, microbiologist talk, so I wouldn't understand that. <laughs> okay, any more questions from the from the audience before we go on to, you know, uh, close the program? Okay, from Lal Gavin Alcomendras again. Just a thought. I think the bacteria is more present on art on ant larvae so maybe it would be a good thing to look into the future what your, what are your thoughts on that yeah i think uh, that is a good uh, like uh, uh, a possible uh, or a good uh, area of study in the future because uh, uh, larvae and uh, and adult uh, ants uh, play different uh, role no and also uh, they might there, there might be a different uh, like microbial uh, communities inside the uh, inside the larva and, and the adult ants. And perhaps I think uh, there are some studies now that are that are available or published uh, looking into the, the, the diversity or microbiomes of larvae. And it is indeed uh, a different communities when compared to, to adult ants or worker ants. Uh, Dr. Noel Sabino, who is also one of our curators, uh, uh, sent a comment uh, that the Philippine Genome Center did a, already did a study on bacteria associated with insects, uh, especially bees. So I think that's a good information for everyone. Uh, okay. More questions. So just a reminder, of, I've already posted the link to our webinar uh, evaluation form. So if you have time, uh, please click on it so that you could uh, evaluate it uh, as soon as possible. So um, I think there are no more questions. Uh, may I call on our, uh, of course, thank you very much, uh, Mike, for that very interesting uh, presentation. And I hope you, were, you are able to continue in, uh, this uh, line of research as you go along uh, on your career path and probably on your, when you get your PhD, I think. <laughs> okay. And, um, and of course, I would like to thank all the guests here we have here for we for attending and uh, and uh, throwing on a lot of uh, interesting uh, questions uh, for Mike to answer. Okay, so may I call on our director, uh, Sir J C Juan Carlos uh, Gonzalez, to say a few 
uh, words before as I prepare the certificate of uh, appreciation that will be uh, presented to our speaker, Michael. Sir JC. Yeah, thank you, Flor. Um, congratulations, Michael. That was a very uh, interesting talk. Um, actually, it kind of brought me back uh, a few years, because uh, uh, eight years ago when I finished my my uh, my PhD, I was my college advisor at St. Anne's actually was sort of one of the experts in tropical forest canopy um, entomology, um, Dr. Martin Spite. So he kind of wrote some of the, the techniques in their textbook. And um, I remember he was asking me, uh, is anybody working on canopy insects in the Philippines? Like, uh, at the moment. So I'm, I'm glad now there's a lot. Actually, there's a lot of, of, of papers coming out about um, canopy entomology. And, and also because it's now integrated, not just with the ants, but it's integrated with the, back, the, the study of bacteria. It's more of a, a very holistic approach. And that's really good. Uh, and also using multiple techniques to understand what's happening between them. Actually, the question was, um, uh, because they are, you know, um, uh, there's a lot of myrmecophagus uh, species around uh, tropical forests, like uh, um, flying lizards are an example where ant specialists, they feed on ants. And what's the impact on them when they feed, knowing that there's a lot more than just eating ants? So yeah, there's a lot more questions than, than ano, siguro. Um, what would happen to them, and so especially now we are thinking about a lot of zoonotic things. So, um, still a lot to study uh, about it. So yes, congratulations, and hopefully you um, progress further um, through this um, endeavor. Um, okay, the floor. I'll read yes, the. Sir. So the Museum of Natural History um, uh, is giving you the certificate of virtually giving you the certificate of recognition. Supposed to be nasa seminar room tayo, inaabot ko to sa iyo But um, because of the, new, the new norma. So uh, certificate of recognition is awarded to Michael P. Gatpatan for serving as our research person during the 2021 MNH Biodiversity Seminar Series entitled Diversity of Bacteria and Arboreal Ants. Hymenoptera uh, family for Missidae in Mount Makiling Forest Reserve. Of course, held today at the, the 11th of February, uh, 2021. And there witnessed their off um, and signed yours truly, JC Gonzalez. And uh, again, thank you very much. And um, also thank you for everyone, the participants yes. for your, um, for the audience. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir, JC. So uh, just a just a reminder. So, um, just reminding everyone to uh, submit their online evaluation. Uh, I posted the link on the chat box, and pwedeng mamayan yun din sagutan. Just go to bit.ly slash 2021-bss-eval, and we will accept responses only un until 5 p.m. So uh, please visit us uh, at our website, mnh.uplb.edu.ph. And if you want to drop us an email, just uh, write us at mnh.uplb.edu.ph. Of course, we are, we are uh, everywhere online and social media. So visit us in Facebook, uh, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Do subscribe, follow, and uh, like us. And we are also can see articles on the UPLB Museum of Natural History at Wikipedia and TripAdvisor. Just look for UPLB Museum of Natural History. So, and um, this uh, recording, the recording of this uh, webinar will be posted hopefully uh, by tonight at youtube.com. So just go to our channel, youtube.com slash UPLB Museum. Um, subscribe and uh, click on that notification bell so that you will be notified of future uploads from our uh, Museum of Natural History Biodiversity Seminar Series. So with that, uh, I'm Florante Cruz. I'm your host and thank you very much. And we hope to see you uh, next week. And we hope to get uh, two more um, uh, speakers uh, for next week. And uh, keep safe, everybody. And bye. Salamat po. Ingat po kayo lahat.